Hello, welcome to this part of a tutorial. We're going to model um, a dry and wet gas. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So, <coughs> if you've not watched part one of our tutorial, I recommend you go back to that, and that will help you to know how to know these sections, the different sections you're seeing here. We have about one, two. The first one is the optional option summary. The second one is the PVT data, the third is the IPR data, the fourth is the equipment data, the fifth the analysis summary. And this one is just the about crossbow software. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> so I will just go straight first to the option summary and I'm double clicking on that. So I have here the type of fluid. Now just choose dry cast, dry and wood cast, right? Okay, so I'll allow the others to be where they are um, using rough approximation. Um, there's a video on these um, how to perform, sorry, how to match your data. Um, but we're not going to cover that here. So if you've not watched that video, please go back to that. I also have a video on how to model an oil and water um, well to model for oil and water that's naturally flowing. And I have videos for how to use um, artificial lifting, right? So now we have that. Uh, okay, we have this is a producer. The well time is a producer. We are not modeling for injector, and um, that's that. So let's continue. Now I come here to the PVT data. I have to specify the gas gravity, and I have the 0.65 as a value for that. And then the separator pressure is 250. Please, as you're inputting these values, please note the the units. The units for my gas gravity, specific gravity. The unit for this, the separator pressure is PSIG. And if what you have, the unit here is not the unit you have, perhaps in the data, so you can actually change the unit, change it to any value you want. Okay, let's continue. Condensate gas, condensate gas gravity is five, and then my condensate gas ratio is five, and then my condensate gravity is fifty. Water to gas ratio is zero, and salinity is ten thousand. Okay, we allow this to be that. Well, the impurities are there, and I do not have data, lab data to match. So I'll continue with what I have. Okay, so I'll come to, let me get to the IPR data and select, I want to use petroleum parts, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm taking the skin by hand, the reservoir pressure, the reservoir pressure is at 2,500, the reservoir temperature is at 180, the water gas ratio is at, um, Water gas ratio is at zero, condensate ratio is at five, okay, and then we allow the other ones. So I input my data. Reservoir permeability, or do I have a reservoir permeability to five milliliters? Then the reservoir thickness is about um, 80 feet. Wow, that's it. And the drainage area is about um, 240 acres. The dead shape factor is the 1.6. Uh, well bore radius is 0 0.354 thing yeah five five four feet perforation interval 60 feet now time since production started now uh, actually i'm starting it just started production so this is 0 0.1 days i reservoir porosity is 0 0.2 and of course the connect water saturation is that so i allow my non decimal factor to be calculated and uh, permeability and types to total permeability. Okay, so let's proceed. The skin from calculation is five, and uh, I don't need one Clifford model, so let's just calculate this. Wow, well, this is R IPR. So we have AOF absolute open flow of fifty-two billion gram. That is mm. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. Okay, good day. Um, so I'll just go done and then let's input the 
equipment data I want to model for all but not for the surface I'll do the surface uh, modeling in GAP okay so let's continue with what we have here done oh, sorry for that I'm supposed to edit okay now this is um a vertical well so of course you know that the measured depth corresponds to the true vertical depth for horizontal well while for a deviated well there'll be some sort of um, discrepancy because of the angle of deviation and for horizontal well the true vertical depth will be the same you'll, it should be constant from the point of deviation where you start doing the horizontal stuff while the measured depth will continue to increase anyway that is what you should know as a petroleum engineer now let's continue what we have um, we have that at the surface so put that there and to up to 5000 and that's how deep our reservoir is so I go down I'll select equipment I just have tubing and the casing and um, <coughs> my tubing is at 4500 and the diameter of my tubing is 2.441 okay my roughness is 0 0.0018 Eight. The same thing here, and then my inside diameter for this is 6.1. Uh, this is at 5000, of course. Okay, now the next is the geothermal gradient and the surface, which is zero feet. Okay, the temperature I have there is 60 degrees from height. And at the reservoir depth, which is 5000, the temperature of there is 180. Of course, that is the reservoir temperature we entered at the IPR data section. My overall overall e transfer that is my U is 3. And like I said, we are using rough approximation, so this value may not actually be true. And that is why you have to perform uh, matching, you have to match your data against production data so as to correct this value this is actually an approximated value and like I said I have a tutorial on that and how to do the matching stuff to correct this value and other things okay so let's continue we allow these values to be there because they're actually correct so I go down and uh, I can actually view I can draw this and see what's actually happening okay you see how it looks like so that is that so I'm going to mean now I am done modeling this now that's all about the, the dry gas but modeling like this uh, will be incomplete if we do not actually check the production rate and other things so let's see let's calculate let's perform some calculations and to see what rates at what rate we are actually producing for these conditions so we have to specify the top node pressure and my top node pressure is at um, 500 the water gas ratio is at zero and then the condensate gas ratio is at five of course we allow these other values to be where they are so we continue i'm not performing the sensitivity let's just continue first we want to determine the flow rate so i'll perform this calculation and it's done and it says the gas rate is at 19.879 million standard cubic feet per day well that's wonderful that is very very wonderful of course we can actually check um uh we can plot this to see what's happening so let's go system plot and of course that's what we have so at the interaction okay the blue line here shows the ipr the inflow performance relationship while the red line shows the vlp and the intersection of the vlp and the ipr gives the rates so uh, I can actually come here to options and I'll show the mouse width out okay so now at this point this is the point just keep your eye on this oh sorry for that let's do that again like I said keep your eye on the section so I go turn that on again keep your eye here okay so if I come to this point so we have 19 so that's the value now i like i said i have a tutorial tutorial that explains this in greater detail i think that should be part two of my tutorial so please go back and watch that too 
Okay, we're done with that. Okay, so that is how to perform, how to model a dry gas. It's, it's pretty simple. Once you have your data, you just go straight input, and then and that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Look at the next tutorial. We're going to look at how to generate lift curves and then how to export those lift curves so that we can use them with other third party softwares like Eclipse and the others. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.